rivers. What they lack in width, they most certainly make up for in the amount of water that passes through them. And they have a huge carrying capacity as home to a wide variety of fish species. Panfish, walleyes, white bass, pike, sturgeon, and the list goes on. And let's not forget bass, in this case, smallmouth bass, which go hand in hand with rivers of all sizes, like peanut butter and jelly. Yes, rivers and smallies are the perfect combination because it seems like no matter the conditions, you can always find some productive water to fish on a river. On today's edge, Al and Dan Linder hit a Midwestern river in midsummer to chase smallmouth bass. Absolutely one of the most fun freshwater fish that swims. From topwaters to spinnerbaits to swim in boot tails and other plastics, Al and Dan bust out the baits to hone in on the best bite. And what they discover is loads of fun in every direction. Boulders, rock piles, laydowns, current breaks and seams. There's plenty of fish holding structure almost everywhere they look, just like a lot of rivers across the country. Now let's check in with the boys as they spend a day chasing river run smallies. Big beautiful fish, tough too. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. You ready to go, Al? Yeah! Yeah, all good, man. Man, I'm really excited. Al and I are fishing a body of water, maybe I should say a section of water we have never fished before. We've heard a lot of stories about a lot of fish, and uh, this is gonna be a fun uh, excursion out, you know, just testing the waters. I tell you, it's been a long winter. The worst winter I've ever seen up north. Snow, more snow, more snow, and the entire Midwest got dumped on in and rain and rain and rain. Everything is flooded. The rivers are over overflowing, lakes are super high. It took forever for the water table to start to go down a little bit. Finally, the rivers are a little bit fishable. Dan, let's go, man. Yeah. Little one, little you one. You couldn't have cast it yeah. any better. <laughs> that thing landed right on its Right feet. on. They're a little <laughs> bit active when you're coming into them. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, you know, they're active. <laughs> that one you had, I'm getting a couple of these dinkies on the prop bait, but these fish are active. You could see them coming out. They're so tight on that cover. Really incredible. It, you got go. it? That, that's one. a better one. Nice. That's a better one, Dan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, whoo! Spinnerbait smallmouth. In current. <laughs> they pull they pull hard enough and then when you get into and then when you get into current, they pull even harder. Look at this dude. Oh, on one of my favorite baits of all time. The spinnerbait. And this is a uh, yeah, that's a better one. Oh. You, you lost that other one yeah. just behind that. That's the Look kind that. of we're you up to. Nice fish. Right out. Beautiful fish. I love fishing rivers. And uh, let me put her back. Yeah, that is so much fun. You get into a small little section or area, and there can be a ton of fish. And one thing I love about fishing rivers, it's a target rich environment. There's so much stuff to throw to. And you have to like fish with two eyes. Like I always got one eye, I'm watching where Al's casting because you can blow through a spot and you can miss uh, you know, a tree, a lay down, a rock or something. So you really got to keep your head on a swivel when you're fishing, watching what the other guy's doing, where he's casting and try and pick apart other spots. Ooh, did you Ooh. see the size of that one? Did he get him? Yeah. Oh, I thought you missed him. He's coming out, he's mad. <clears throat> nice, Al. Oh, what a beauty. <sighs> Oh, yeah. This segment has been brought to you by Donlinger Automotive, and they want to encourage you to drive safe on the road and on the water. 
This segment is brought to you by Blackfish Outdoor Apparel because you can't choose the weather. Boy, does she come charging out yeah. of here. Woo. Wow, what a good, day. Good one. Good one, Dano. Boy, with this fast current like that, that, <sighs> that spot lock is a lifesaver, isn't oh. it? If you, you fish fish current like this, you got fish current like this. It is amazing. Well, amazing. Push, Look at that fish. Yeah. You almost Woo. have to ask yourself, how did you do it when you didn't have it? <laughs> man, oh man. Give me the player stand. Gotcha. I'm sitting there. A, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the spot lock that on that Minn Kota is amazing. Amazing. Look, this one's got a bunch of rubs on it. Yeah. L look at it. Yeah, I thought we were past the spawn already. That's a big fish. Most cases, they're done. Yeah, you know, done, done. Look at this. This fish has been caught once before. Look at that. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, all over North America, and yeah, you know, especially in the upper Midwest and many parts of Canada, River fishing can be absolutely phenomenal, especially for smallmouth bass. Smallmouth bass love fast moving water. Rivers, creeks, anything that has moving water. And, and many of these, many smaller rivers have tons of smallmouth, you know, and it's all relative. The smaller the river, you can go catch 50, 100 smallmouth in a day and some bodies of water wading and going through in a three pounder in a small, small system is a big fish. You get in a bigger river like we're on now, we get a shot of five pounders. The rule of thumb is the bigger the river, the more environment, the more big fish. That's pretty typical. But smallmouth love running water. They love it. And you know what else I like about smallmouth fishing in rivers? They bite all year long. It's an easy, easy target. You know, you can always get some good ones. And like we said earlier, uh, we had one of the worst winters, maybe not the worst winter, but the most snowfall in, I don't know, like 15, 16 years or something like that. So that means we had all this snow, and then in the spring on top of that, we had torrential downpours. So we had a lot of, lot of water this uh, winter and spring. And what does that do? Just causes rivers to push and flow. And uh, now they just finally got settled where you got some clarity and you can actually fish them. You know, when that water gets really, really high, like we had this year, like Dan was talking about, mega snow, mega spring rains. If you've had real high water for a long period of time, the fish will migrate toward the sources of current. First, they get out of the channel, come in shallow, get in the backwater. Then they keep moving toward the areas of current flow. Big bodies of water like I'm on now, there's a dam not too far up from here. Big populations of the smallmouth bass have moved up here because the water's been running so high so long. Uh, big rivers, if you have smaller rivers dumping into that river, a lot of the smallmouth, like I'm targeting, will move up into those smaller rivers. Smaller rivers like this with little creeks, they'll gather around the mouth of it. So anywhere you've got current coming in, there's fish there. And those fish could be for a half a mile area around it. It's like a fish magnet. He's on it. He's on it. Can't tell, is that a good one? Yeah, yeah. Look at him. Hey, whoa, come on! How in the world? Oh man, that was super fun. I could, didn't get him to bite though. That fish chased me out about 15, 20 feet. You know, when you're fishing rivers, it pays to be rigged up right. And I mean, you know, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the boat and your electronics, your troll motor. First off, you have to have uh, a troll motor with spot lock. It's like mandatory. Secondly, uh, you want to have a towel and a shallow water anchor. Otherwise, you're just going to be blowing through these spots and you will miss so many fish. The other thing that's really, really nice is having a um, Zero Lines SD card because it's got an outline of all of the uh, river shoreline even though it doesn't have the depth contours so it just makes fishing rivers a lot more fun that's for sure
The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Good one. Yeah, <clears throat> that, that skitter prop is a really efficient bait too, isn't it? Oh, come on. Why that fish was way, way, way up in there. Way up in that stuff. <laughs> I'm mad that fish came out of there like a lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah, when they want it, they want it. <sighs> I'm always needing them players, boy. You want me to Look at where No, just bit? leave us. I'm spot locked, I thought. No, no, no. All right. You're not. All right. Okay, I'll start lucky here. Yeah. It's a good one. You, you can see how skinny they are after the spawn. You know, look at it that way. Yeah, you know, they're really skinny from that perspective. You know, the baits, Dan and I predominantly, predominantly been working top water and the spinner bait. Let me show you this. This is one of my all time favorite river baits. I got a, 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 a wrap of a popping bait on, but when I get in current, and they, they hit a popper, a lot of guys fish the poppers, but these little prop baits, this is skitter prop. This bait in rivers for smallmouth is legendary. It goes all the way back a zillion years ago to a little bait called the tiny torpedo. To my knowledge, it was the first of this, this style of bait, and it was always used to catch smallmouths when you get in shallow water rivers. And it is, I'm, I mean, you fish smallmouths. Besides the spinner bait and a number of other things, you're looking for a little tiny prop bait. This bait ain't easy to get, but it is a killer, an absolute killer. You want to add it to your, your bag of tricks. The other nice thing about fishing in a river like this is you can almost always beat the wind. You know what I mean? It could be blowing out on the lake. You can always come to a river and find some, oh, yeah, <laughs> and always find some fish to catch. And once again, I just wanted to remind you, if, if you look, <laughs> these fish are coming out of a shaded, a shaded area. You, you know, not that we haven't caught a few fish on the other side where the rocks are, but the shaded, and you could see those shaded areas, they'll draw the fish that are a little bit active, it'll draw them out from under the cover a little bit more. You know, they just get a little more active. Shade always does that. Shade is always a big plus in any kind of fishing. And it's oftentimes overlooked. What I mean by overlooked, anglers don't think so much about it. Yeah, yeah, you know, and how the fish are relating to it. What banks to fish, shady banks, uh, time of day on certain structures, all of that shade is such an amazing, amazing thing to keep in mind, even on deep weeds. I learned that fishing with my son Troy and his buddy Bill Simantel in, in California, a lot in those that? canyon reservoirs. Oh. The power of shade. Nice Ooh, one. Big one. Whoa, mama, mama. Big fish, man. Oh, yeah. Big fish. Right off the tail out. Look at this thing. Big fish. The very end of this run wow. right here. Wow. <laughs> That's water lining on a big biggie of the day. Look at that. Big bruiser. Big bruiser bronze back. Yeah, we've fished a lot of different baits today and caught fish on, on everything, interestingly. Some were better than others at times. And it seems like, whoa, come on, dude. The Storm GT is producing now. And it's such an easy bait to fish. That's what I love about it. You can't, you can't fish it wrong. You can pop it, you can jig it, you can swim it, you can, you know, you, there's no wrong way to fish that bait. <laughs> That's why it's so effective. You know what I mean? Big, beautiful fish. Bloop. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Real wow. mad. Yeah. Oh. 
fun when the there's one with this one, Jan, Dan. I just see she just swam down. There was one with it. It's fun when the the bait of the bait of choice is a topwater bait. Yeah. Nothing's better yeah. than that. You can't throw anything better than a topwater bait. That's a that's the epitome of fun fishing. There, another good one. Another really good one. Boy, they're good looking fish. Yeah. They're eating up it. They're eating after that, after the spawn. That's what they're doing. And one thing to remember, uh, keep in mind, when you start anywhere that I've seen this happen up north that coincided really good with a topwater bite, anytime you see a bug hatching in spring of the year, like, like we're at now, late spring, uh, the dragonflies come out, you start seeing dragonflies. And this is one of nature's signs Get a top water out, smallmouths are eating it on lakes, rivers, and reservoirs. And anytime there's a hatch, mayfly hatches up here, that happens. But the dragonflies, it's like clockwork, absolutely like clockwork. The rod and reel that I'm using here is my favorite top water rod for largemouth and smallmouth. It's the St. Croix Legend Tournament Series, 6 8 medium power, extra fast action. See this reel here? This is from Daiwa. It's a Daiwa Zillion. In my opinion, this is the best bait casting reel for this type of fishing and most bass fishing that I do that I have ever fished. This reel, a little bit spendy, but it is a phenomenal, phenomenal reel. You like, you want to uh, uh, do somebody you love and care about a big favor? Give them this combination, this reel and this rod to go fishing with and you're gonna get all kind of hugs for many, many, many years. It is deadly. My line is Suffolk's Mono, it's 14 pound test. A heck of a combination for topwater fishing. Ooh, boy, hey. that could be a good one. Oh yeah, running. Oh yeah. Running. Oh yeah, yeah, good. Oh, there's another that, one with him. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a dog. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Nice. Oh, man. Had another one with him. Yeah, I had another one with him. Started off like gangbuster, and I went, I went to this 360 GT a little later in the day, and man, it's been a game changer, Dano. Yeah. It's been a game changer. Even when I should be zagging. Whoa. Look at that. Whoa. You know, these rivers, like I mentioned earlier to you, they offer some of the finest smallmouth fishing in North America. And uh, it's a good bet if you do a little snooping around, there's a river, stream, a body of running water that's close to where you live that in a lot of cases is overlooked by an awful lot of fishermen. Hey, I got a guest on today's show. It's my nephew, Dan, who does all of the shooting and editing most of it at least for Angling Edge and Fishing Edge. He's been doing this all his life. I don't know how many shows he edited and shot, but it's a whole bunch much. And often we get to talking, talking about the things of God and I say, say uh, he brings up something. I say, hey, you want to use that in one of the clothes? And he says, yeah, okay, go for it. So um, I was thinking about this and Alan and I were talking. It, it, the question popped up is, do you believe in angels? And there's no way to really quantify that, but I, do and I'm I believe in angels and here's the reason why um, many years ago I was mountain biking with two friends of mine and I was mountain bike I, I'm not a very good mountain biker to begin with and I didn't have a helmet on I had no gear this was a number of years ago before anything was like the way it is today and we we're up at a ski hill way up north mountain biking and I was way up there and I started riding down this hill and I could feel it my my fillings were rattling out of my head and I come around this corner and my front tire toe hooked and I went over the handlebars and in midair, I physically felt my body get moved. I mean, I get emotional about it, but I got 
and just sat down. And I was like, the, the wind wasn't knocked out of me. And I looked over and there was a, a rock spike like this. I would have been shish kebobbed. I would have been dead it, instantly. And right as soon as I got laid flat like that, ran through my head and this is the Holy Spirit and the angels working in concert. Don't be dumb. You're riding beyond your means. <laughs> Walk your bike back. I'm laying there and I'm like, okay, yes, sir. And I slowly <laughs> get up, get my bike up, ka-thump, 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 ka-thump. Walked my, walked my hind end all the way back to the lodge, which was quite a ways, but, oh, I mean, I get, I get teary-eyed thinking about it, but that, that's what, that's the reason I believe and there's no question about it. God gave us a gift to deal with something like that, and we all get it. Even if you don't believe in God, there's something that he gave you. It's called a conscience. And let me, this is in, in Dr. Charles Stanley's daily devotional. And when you mentioned this, this came to mind because I was going to use it. He said, the conscience is God's early warning system for alerting us to potential danger. It monitors our emotions, thoughts, and conduct. Think of the conscience as a radar system that notifies us of possible trouble, usually without specifically identifying the problem. The principles and standards that we hold determine the sensitivity of our conscience. Then it goes on to say, failure to heed your inner alarm can bring serious consequences. Yep. Your conscience is a gift from God and most of you that are watching this at some point in time have had that gut feeling something's wrong don't go there don't do this make a change and uh, 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 it's important to be sensitive to it because bad things happen yeah. if you don't I right, thanks for sharing that Dan Dan I love love it hey from all of us here at the edge have a good safe fishing season see you on the water Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.